So, All right, so this is our disclaimer. This is an experiment. We don't really know what we do, we're doing. I mean, we didn't even know what this pachakcha, pichakucha, this PK thing. We didn't know what it was about a couple weeks ago. But well, we're excited to be here and share a theory that we've developed with you. Yeah, and it's actually very relevant to the last speaker. So there's a movement that's been going on called Design for the Other 90%. It's resulted in a lot of really cool and innovative technology. It's basically designing stuff for people in developing countries. Stuff like this water filter here that can allow people to drink out of streams. It's gained a lot of publicity and it's even been featured in this book from the Smithsonian. But we believe that this approach is inherently flawed. We think that why should, and, and pardon me because this is the only way I know to say this, but we think why should if you live in a shitty situation, you only deserve shittier products? And we think we can do better. We think we need to change our paradigm. So Coca-Cola is an interesting product because, yeah, it has a lot of negative things associated with the company, but it's a product where a homeless person on the street and the President of the United States, the big guy, they both enjoy the same product. There's not a more premium Coca-Cola that the President of the United States can enjoy with all of his resources. So another interesting thing we've seen is a movement called One Laptop Per Child. And a lot of people actually view this as a failure because they didn't distribute as many laptops to as many children as they had hoped to. But we actually think it's a tremendous success because it pushed technological innovation in a way that we never could have expected. It resulted in netbooks and tablet computers that we know and love. So our hypothesis is that instead of designing for the other 90%, we can design for the 100%. Um, and this is a philosophy that we're developing and we're hoping to develop with all of you. Um, but it's saying that everyone deserves good design, right? Um, and so that's really what we're exploring today. So a lot of you have probably heard of Tom's Shoes and their one-for-one -one model. It's a really interesting and powerful approach that says basically, we sell a pair of shoes in the US, and then we give a pair of shoes to someone in a developing country, and it's done a lot of powerful things. But is this the best approach? Do you value something, really, that you get for free? Not really. Not as much as something you paid for. Telephone technology is also very interesting. In developing countries, they didn't have the ability to develop landlines everywhere. So they got rid of landlines. Bam! The 100% has cell phone technology. Everyone can benefit from this and improve their situation. And so technology challenges our logic and forces us to turn it upside down. Another interesting product are flip-flops. We've all probably had this pair of flip-flops, whether they come from Old Navy or Walmart, we couldn't figure out. But they're affordable, they're aesthetically pleasing. I mean, yellow is a good color. And <laughs> they serve the same purpose for pretty much everyone. These are a true 100% product. Flippy floppy. <laughs> so they call design for the other 90% a revolution, right? But we all know that revolutions are an event in time, and they fizzle and fade. Um, and so really what we're talking about is that it's not just about a revolution. A revolution is a very necessary step in a larger evolutionary process. And so what we're, we're arguing is that design for the 100% is actually an evolutionary process that's necessary and is happening today. Um, and it's, it's improving upon the situation. And we're saying that you can create products that can benefit everyone. And they don't, you don't need to distinguish between the 10% and the 90% like it's happening today. And so when we see pictures like this, it's very easy to, to stereotype and discriminate. We assume that maybe these children are sick, they're, they're unintelligent, and they're unmotivated to improve their situation. But we shouldn't do that. We shouldn't stereotype like that. You know, people are people. They, they could be funny, they could be smart, they could be mean, they could be douchebags, just like <laughs> you and I. So there are a lot of powerful things that are happening in the world today that we think make this evolution possible. And one of them is the vast availability of information. We all have access to so much information and so many tools. And these digital tools allow us to collaborate on a global scale to solve truly global problems. So we believe we're in a new age of technology. And we have to reinvent the wheel. We have to take our newfound understanding of physics, chemistry, biology, psychology, economics, democracy, and apply it all to reinventing the wheel and creating new solutions that can help our sort of global community. Pause for effect. <laughs> so here's the creed of the 100% designer. We are all human. Now as designers, we already kind of knew this, but really we have to remember that while everybody everywhere has different cultural needs and considerations, 
We all have the same fundamental human needs, and that's really what we have to look at. And so in designing for the 100%, we believe it's really important to have immersion, immersing yourself in different contexts. And really what we're arguing is that by immersing yourselves in new contexts, in developing countries, we can work to solve our own challenges that we're facing here. Because you have different resources and capabilities, and so you have to approach problems in different ways. So it's really important to note that what we're talking about here is not limited tr to traditional charity that says, let me just give you something. We want to actually create things that are desirable, people want to have them, they're feasible, that means they can be technologically done, and they're viable, which means they can be turned into a long-term success. And this is different than the traditional model that we're used to, where we say, hi, I'm in a developed country, I've got a lot of money and smarts, and I'm going to come over and I'm going to pull you along because you don't know what you're yeah, doing. Well, and that, <laughs> that doesn't really work. We think we can do better than that because when you're getting pulled along, you're always behind, you're always looking at the bad side of that person. You're always eating their dust. And that sucks. And when you get <laughs> empowered, then you can finally catch up. And so what Adam and I are doing is we're challenging sort of the, the model of existing technology and solutions and business and things like that. And we're immersing ourselves in developing world context, forcing ourselves to discover the fundamental human needs, and emerge from that and push the design to something that is truly designed for the 100% and can benefit everyone. And so if you'd like to learn more, about our efforts to design for the 100%, our, our experiment to create a prosthetic arm that can truly benefit the 100%, we encourage you to visit our website at supportipt.org. Thank you very much.